okay um, here we are again and uh, we're at the point now where uh, we are ready to put power into this board um, like I said um, I know we're a little bit crowded on the bench at the moment but uh, that's just trying to fit everything in the frame um, we have the large transformer here we have the uh, Banggood board here which I've connected using these crocodile clip meters to the voltmeter and obviously here are the pass transistors mounted on the big heat sink um, no forced cooling at this point because I haven't uh, connected any sort of load for it um, these are the voltage and current controls this one's current this one's voltage so what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm just going to put the mains onto this transformer and uh, hopefully uh, as you see it's connected with uh, a pair of crocodile clips and uh, yes this is silicon wire so because it's under that heat sink I'm not worried about melting um, to the AC input here and obviously it will go through the board and it will come down to here and we should read an output voltage and hopefully we'll be able to get somewhere between um, 0 and 30 volts which is what the board says it should be able to do um, when we did measure this transformer it was 26 volts off load so um, with any luck it should work uh, uh, I've got the mains voltage set on this cable here with the uh, the multi select switch to 240 volts as you can just see in the bottom of the frame there and it's connected to the mains uh, directly with a plug uh, with a fuse in it obviously so I don't um, blow everything up if I go completely wrong um, I know these are polarised red and black but they're not actually because it's AC off the transformer there's no rectification until it reaches the board here so I think the only thing left to do is switch it on and see what happens so ready for the flash the bang and let's go oh right we have power um, and we're reading 5 volts DC on the board if I turn this one it gives me up to 29 volts and if I bring it back down I can bring it down to huh, 0.1 of a volt so it looks like this board is actually doing let's see how good it is at low end how controllable we are um, primarily for those times when I want to uh, say recharge a NICAD mm -hmm. so one half volts if I put a fine control in there I should be able to do that that's not too bad let's take it up let's see how accurate we can get 5 volts now bearing in mind this board isn't under load at the moment there's uh, absolutely no heat on these transistors at all see 13 it certainly seems to be quite stable So yeah, all the way up to 30 volts. Now I have got a load that I can put on it, which is the uh, the old bench lights. So what I can do is uh, I'll turn this down to 12 volts, although they're not that critical. Now that's pretty accurate. I'm quite happy with that. And I can let's see if I can. Uh, connect these as well using 
the same clips without shorting everything out. Right, so the bench lights have come on. So I've got one, two spotlights, just, just, you see the shadows of my hands underneath them. So the regulation is coping very well. These pass transistors are they're not getting hot and I can't see any smoke coming from anywhere. The 24 volt regulator is not getting warm. There's a little bit of heat on this uh, 47 0.47 ohm resistor in fact quite a lot of heat on there um, what we can do is uh, let's see if we can limit the current right now we're in current limiting mode I would imagine because the LEDs come on and the voltage is falling and the lamps have gone out which means obviously I, where you limit the current to a level um, now to measure current let's take it all the way up to the top again um, I'm gonna have to do some quick changes so let's take that off of there and that off of there um, we're gonna need positive into there negative into there let's set it to the 10 amps DC range and rest that on there so that's a, a 2 amp load so we're working well within the spec and if I limit the current 600 milliamps the lights are still lit the LED for current limiting is still on so they're actually only getting what's that 10 milliamps nearly 9 milliamps 8, 7, 6, 2, 1, 11 milliamps it looks like I've uh, wired this control backwards even though it's the same as the other one um, there you go, 12 milliamps and it is still lit um, so nothing seems to be I'm getting a bit of warmth out the pass transistors at 2 amp load but nothing that uh, isn't doable. Um, yeah, yeah, um, let's, let's not limit the current. And uh, yeah, the back up to two amps of draw, which uh, I think is uh, pretty good. So that's um, yeah, that resistor is getting warm. Are any of the up amps warm? not that I can tell I don't know if this adjuster here which is maximum current limit has been set uh, do I need a smaller one than that I need a smaller one than that uh, now that's a Phillips one uh, there we go there's a flat one
this should be set to limit the actual maximum current that these could draw So it looks like it was pretty well set up at the top. Bearing in mind that the board is only actually designed as a, as a 3 amp power supply. So uh, yeah, we need to crank this all the way to the top anyway. have to figure out adding more of a load to this. Um, so anyway, I think uh, as it stands we have a successful experiment there. Um, I'm not going to do a direct short, let's put that back to volts. And uh, check that the, uh, the voltage remains the same paraphrase Led Zeppelin there. Um, let's see what it's like regulation wise with the 2 amp load on it. Um, so if I just hang them on there. So the voltage hasn't actually changed much with the load. So it, it still maintains there. Now because these lights are designed for cars in theory, yes, I can take them up to a higher voltage and turn them down. So that actually take the full voltage, but uh, how long for I wouldn't like to say. Um, but yeah, as a regulated supply, I think that's not doing too bad as a bench supply. So now, now I have a dilemma. Do I wire this up as a single high current supply, or do I turn it into a dual 3 amp, 5 amp power supply, dual 3 amper? and then bridge the connections if I need to. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Um, hmm. How easy would that be? Um, I'm just having thoughts about uh, just checking the oscilloscope trace actually to see what the, uh, the output looks like. Um, let me just turn my scope on. connect the scope to the leads because we can right um, press auto set um, I've got to say that's not not the cleanest trace I've seen DC voltage is there. Uh, right, okay. Um, just to carry on from where we were, I've put the camera freehand, so you'll have to excuse uh, dodgy focusing and uh, movement while I um, right. So as you see, that is the output and we're on DC so um, I'm not convinced that this supply under that load is particularly well regulated um, I wonder if I take it down and no, no, take it down a few divisions and bring the Y position down. As you see, that's meant to be a DC signal, and it's 
hashing all over the place. So I wouldn't want to use that on a sensitive digital circuit, shall we say. Um, not without cleaning it up. I think I'm going to have to try changing some capacitors, maybe putting more capacitors in a bank uh, for the DC side of things as an add-on board and maybe actually putting a capacitor across the output. Um, if you want to actually look at the settings on the uh, scope, there we are, we're on uh, 50 microsecond trigger and um, 2 volts DC per trace so you're getting almost a volt of noise um, if you're going by that trace there so uh, you know, although the, the base DC trace is, is under there dead on the centre line it's yeah that's not a clean signal OK, I think we're going to have to do some more experimentation with this and uh, bring you back in another part. Thanks very much for watching and we'll speak to you soon.